Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Um, I've been doing this for some time now, maybe somewhere around a year, I think. Um, and one of the most common questions I get about spearfishing is, how do you find new spots? What are you looking for? I think a lot of you guys are under the impression I have all these super secret spots that just hold tons and tons of fish. Well, that's honestly not the case. Um, so today I'm gonna try and answer the question of how do I find new spots? What do I look for? Um, so this is what I'm gonna do. Don't worry, I backed these up last night. I'm gonna delete all of my waypoints from the GPS. See how long this takes. Along with tracks. I think I did it. It's confused, it's freaking out. So, as you can see, I have no waypoints. So pretty much what I'm gonna do today, um, I'm gonna drive around, go, I'm gonna head straight south out of Key West, get to the reef, the visibility's been great from what I've seen, um, and I'm gonna use my bottom machine. I'm gonna try to find new spots, show you guys what it is I'm looking for, um, some tips and tricks. And quite honestly, like I said, not every single spot that I find or that I have has fish all over it. Um, and something else I'm gonna uh, kind of explain is the style of uh, hunting throughout the day that we do. Um, and hopefully you learned some today. Um, other than that, here we go. Let's rock and roll. here as you can see I have no numbers just kind of driving around uh, so I ran across this this real thin is sand and this is a nice little hump um, you can see it's fairly deep 65 feet where this gets real thick and make lets me know oh there's some life coming up too where this gets real thick lets me know that there's a decent amount of rock there whether it's just heavy hard bottom or the swiss cheese bottom that i really like i don't know but um you see there's a little bit of life there so i'm gonna anchor up on this edge where it meets the sand and start chumming see what we can find <laughs> going everybody welcome back i appreciate you being patient with us um trying to get these episodes out as quickly as possible but we're having a late season run of charters down here and i just have been slammed busy and my days off i'm trying to get out and make episodes so it's just been kind of hectic but appreciate you hanging in there and continuing to watch the videos uh, this is just a preliminary dive kind of checking out the bottom um it actually looked pretty good. You can see there's some bigger rocks. Water wasn't crystal clear, but clear enough. Bigger rocks, some nice caves, uh, plenty of, you know, plenty of structure for fish, grouper, snapper, all kinds of stuff. It re looked really great. I hadn't really let the chum soak here. This was just kind of a quick dive just to check out the bottom, see what I was working with. Nothing there yet. Big thanks to my buddy Will for being my safety again. Uh, a little deep for his taste. I was the only one shooting the bottom this day, but I appreciate it. So another drop. I had let the chum soak for a little while, about 10 minutes. Um, you can see a little bit of life down there. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, brimming with life or anything, but so the bottom looked great. It's a nice dog snapper up there. It's kind of strange to see them this far off the bottom. If you've ever hunted any dog snappers, they're kind of territorial to holes and um, 
they like to zip in and out of them. This guy was just way up off the bottom, real curious. He kind of did that typical snapper chase, but where he, they kind of just give you one eye at a time, but he made a broadside here, unfortunately for him. I was able to get a good shot. See a lot of smaller, you know, 12 to 15 inch dog snappers inshore, but it's nice to see some bigger ones out in the deep water. They're absolutely gorgeous snappers if you've never seen them. They're just bright orange. And they are delicious. This is another drop. I've been having a lot of you guys reach out about charters and I really appreciate it. I'm I just, I, you know, I'm at a loss for words of how many of you guys are calling me to book trips. It, it really is amazing getting me back on track after all this COVID. Um, but if you've never done the spearfishing thing, it's your, if it's your first time, I keep finding out, apparently it looks a lot easier on YouTube. Uh, I have a lot of you guys coming down and trying to try it for the first time. Um, it's pretty difficult if you've never done it, even in the shallows. Um, but just keep that in mind. I'm, I'm, like I said, just ecstatic to have you guys calling me and, you know, to book oh, trips oh, and stuff, oh. but apparently it looks easier on YouTube. A little bit of grunting here trying to get something to come in and actually this mutton came to check me out pretty curious don't really like that shot but i took it anyways um had a little bit of faith i got lucky there kind of that down and out shot heading away from me didn't take any meat got lucky and stuck in the gill plate there and that's a tricky little play right there that fish you gotta be careful with that running that line around your legs um I've seen some people almost get in sticky situations with that happening. Just be conscious of your line management. Uh, and something else I wanted to mention, uh, a lot of you guys are sending me ideas on what you want to see. Um, everything down in Key West is seasonal. A lot of you guys are asking about the deep dropping. Um, uh, some of the deep dropping stuff is closed commercially right now, so I can't really do it, and recreationally. Um, a lot of you guys are asking for Wahoo. Wahoo are still early in the season, but they are starting to show up. Um, I'm going to get to all those ideas as soon as I can, but uh, just keep in mind, everything's pretty much seasonal down here, so I can only do what I can do and what's and what's around, but keep sending me the ideas. I love you guys sharing your thoughts and all that stuff on, on the comments. I really appreciate it. This is one more drop under the boat. See quite a few yellowtails starting to show up. Um, I'd seen a couple cabarrus swimming around, but I normally don't shoot those. I like to save those for clients if I can. They're kind of a prize fish for most people. I've shot my fair share of them, so I leave them. Nice mangrove. I think of all the shallow water snappers, I think mangrove is probably my favorite. Mangrove and dog snapper. So, that is our first spot. First new spot, rather. Some nice muttons, saw two more muttons. I was honestly looking for groupers. The grouper bottom here, like, or not, it's not grouper bottom, it looks like what I normally hunt for groupers. Uh, kind of big cracks, a lot of holes and rocks. Looks great, didn't see any groupers though. A couple nice cuberas. Quite honestly, the cuberas don't pull a great price at the market, so. I like to save them. Charter, like uh, charter clients of mine, Cabarrus normally high on the list for a lot of those people. So now I got a spot I can come look for Cabarrus, but we're gonna keep pushing along and see what else we can find. So I'm still driving around. Um, this one drops way down. This is on the deep side of the reef, but you can see this top edge around 60, quite a bit of life on it. Um, it's a little thinner. I don't think it's gonna be that Swiss cheesy type bottom. Looks more like hard bottom, but like I said, it's got some nice humps of life there. So I'm gonna try and drop my anchor somewhere around here. Hopefully sit on this area a little bit and do some drops. Let's see. So this spot, the bottom was decent. I mean, it wasn't anything spectacular, just kind of, you know, some decent reef, decent amount of life. I think at the end they said that it was a terrible spot. I just meant that there wasn't any fish there this day. I actually saved this number because I could definitely see it holding some groupers at some point if there was some bait balled up or anything like that. But um, just because there's not fish here today doesn't mean there couldn't be fish another time. Mm -mm -mm. 
I saw, I actually did see a couple muttons here. Um, I don't know if my camera was on at the time, but some muttons, mangroves. Kind of doing my grunting thing there again to see if anything will come in. These mangroves were just too nice not to, not to take a chance at. Kept getting lucky. I was a little sloppy on shooting to, on this day. Not the best shots, but the fish were coming in the boat, so no complaints, I guess. chum you can see there's some bait there the more we chum the more stuff started to show up i think maybe if we would have spent a little more time gave it another 20 minutes chumming i think you know we could have had a shot at some legal bigger groupers the viz was real spotty this day one spot would be clear you'd move half a mile it would be murky then clear then murky uh, it was kind of weird but this spot was actually really clear on the deeper side of the reef some mangroves, there's a nice grouper there. He was probably legal. Ugh, I didn't know, I wasn't convinced on it. If if I'm not 100% positive, I don't. I actually take a terrible shot on this mangrove. This was kind of an impulse, that down and straight on top of him shot, I hate that. Got a little bit of meat on there, but um, if I can help it, I try not to take that shot. Normally you miss, because your, your target gets a lot smaller when they turn up and down like that. So, quite honestly, that spot was terrible. The life kind of went away. It was mainly like pork fish and kind of reef style fish. There wasn't a lot of yellow tails. One mangrove snapper, one small black I saw. Doesn't take long. Um, that's kind of the what I was talking about earlier in the video. Um, diving technique and like time management throughout the day. There was no fish there. I'm not gonna spend much there. We were there for 10 minutes tops. So if there's fish there, stay. If there's not fish, keep on moving, which is what we're gonna do. So I just ran over that. Uh, could be yellowtails. Could be blue runners, not sure. It rolls off, kind of flattens out into sand and there's a little hump, there's not much there, but if it's holding bait, I like it. So we're gonna hop in a little deep, but we're gonna give it a shot. So this spot was littered with life. Um, I actually ran over just the edge of it, so it was a little bigger than I thought it was, you know, from looking at the depth finder. Um, you can see the amount of life here. It's just tons and tons of bait, big barracudas, all kinds of little snappers and stuff. Um, and the bottom looks great. It's hard bottom with patchy bigger rocks, some cracks and holes. This is pretty ideal for grouper, uh, in my opinion. Um, I saw one small one, didn't see any legal ones. It was kind of strange, but you know, sometimes they're just not there. Not every spot is loaded with fish. Definitely save this number there. I will be back uh, to check this out at a later date. You can see some bigger shelves there, kind of mushroom style rocks with some nice cracks and holes in them. Really, really great bottom. There was one small mutton that I passed on. Just wasn't, I don't know, wasn't feeling it. I was trying to hold out for something bigger, but definitely a great spot. So there wasn't honestly a ton on that spot. Kind of expected to see more with as much life and bait as there was. Uh, a couple mangroves, some buttons. I didn't even shoot them. I half expected to see a couple legal blacks at least from what I saw. Real nice bottom, tons of life. But it's right off Key West, so it probably gets hit pretty hard. Uh, we're gonna run down the reef a few miles and resume searching. So to be completely honest, I stopped filming. Hit two spots. I haven't seen anything at all. Not even a shootable fish. But I was driving down the reef. Um, I found this giant ball of yellowtails. What it looks like. Um, as I drove by, they kind of shot out towards the surface. So I threw the anchor, and they're kind of sitting under the boat, which means someone probably fishes this. But it looks promising. The bottom's okay. Looks kind of thick. But as I was driving over, it looked sandy and rocky mixture. But 
Um, we're gonna get in. I like how this looks. So this was my first test dive. I hadn't really let the chum soak, but you can see the amount of bait here. Like the, the amount of yellowtail was insane. Someone must fish this. Um, and I don't really think it's a commercial spot because all the yellowtails were tiny, uh, unless they just come by and feed them and waiting for them to get bigger. But um, the bottom wasn't that great. You can see there's a lot of sand, little patchy rocks, nothing spectacular. I mean, I've shot grouper in places like this, but this wouldn't be my first choice for grouper bottom, but there was actually some small ones swimming around. You can see I hadn't, didn't really do much chumming and there were already a few small ones swimming around. So it looked pretty good. Um, decided to spend the time there and chum a little longer. I think we chummed for about 10 minutes before I did another drop. And this is that second drop. You know, fish can really be anywhere. You don't have to be on the, the bottom that you want. If they're there, they're there. I was a little surprised to see as many fish as I did here. I'm kind of just panning around. I try not to engage the fish until I'm like pretty much ready to shoot. You can see those groupers were borderline. Uh, and there's one, you can't see it yet. I had been eyeballing, but I didn't really want to engage him. I'm kind of drifting towards him without actually engaging him and letting him know. And you can see right here, I actually start to engage him and you'll see him pop out right there. And that's when he knows, he, know, he can read my body language. He was real mellow because I was real mellow. He gave me an easy shot. Um, that was pretty much textbook. You can't get any, can't get any better than that. The groupers are very, very aware of your body language and what your intentions are. Most fish in general, not just the groupers. This was actually the very next drop. You can see we were still chumming, not lots of yellowtails there, which I'm guessing that's why all the groupers are there. They love to eat, love to eat the yellowtails, so they, they're normally not too far off if you find a decent amount of them. It was a little fuzzy on this spot. Like I said, the viz kept going in and out, depending on where we were. A couple groupers there shooting towards the bottom. One little bigger one that I had my eye on. You can tell he, he knows what I'm up to, but I was mellow, so he was mellow. Didn't get the stone shot on this one. He kind of goes crazy, but I, I could see that the flopper was all the way through him. Otherwise, I would have swam down to the bottom and grabbed him, but I was comfortable with just pulling him up. I knew I had a good shot, and the flopper went all the way through. Another very nice grouper. Woo! Mm -hmm. So, I do like this spot. It's a little fuzzy still. The water's getting kind of worse, it seems like. Um, not monsters, but two nice blacks. Happy to find some today. Just kind of losing faith there. 26 on the smaller one, about 27 on the little bit bigger one. So, pretty happy with that. Nice spot, like I said, once I got in, the bottom really wasn't spectacular. It was kind of sand pat patchy with little rocks, but um, there was tons of tons of yellowtails on it, which is what the groupers eat. Tons of small groupers, but found those two keepers. Let's keep going. Probably do one more spot, maybe two. Not going hardcore commercial today. It's already two o'clock. We, we got out here about 9.30, so going all right though. So we are on top of the reef. Um, I'm in 27 feet of water. You can see what looks like a big ledge right there. I'm gonna check that. Fortunately, today it is crystal clear, which made this really easy because I can actually see the ledges in the rock piles. Um, it's not normally like this, so if it's murky, I'm normally just looking at my depth finder trying to find that type of ledge. But fortunately for me, it's pretty clear today. I can see there's kind of a ridge right here that runs down. Um, should have some ledges in it, hopefully. We're gonna stick our heads in and see what we got. So we had spent actually quite a little bit of time 30 40 minutes searching these ledges and rocks this was the only real fish of interest there were some yellow jacks and stuff that swam by nothing serious um this grouper had my attention he was 
he was curious to where it made me think he was short, but he just he had that look where he looked big enough. Um, and I'm pretty good at judging size. He was probably 25 inches. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was legal, but I just, I don't know. Save him for a later day, I guess. This is one of the techniques I've talked about. I want to do a video of just hunting ledges and holes for you guys, uh, for the shallower people. Um, you can see, once I saw him in here, he kind of sized me up, and then I was kind of convinced he was big enough, but I just didn't have it in me to take the shot. I don't know, whatever. But I was looking with my gun and my light there. It's a, like I said, that's another video I want to make for some of the shallower, shallower divers, that style hunting. We'll do that at a later date, hopefully. <laughs> Beard is stuck in the wetsuit. All right, well that is a wrap, boys and girls. Um, not a, not the most stellar day, the normal standards, but I think it was a decent day considering the theme of things. A couple nice growers, nice dog snapper. I think we got two muttons, two black groupers, a uh, nice zero. So hopefully you learned something there. Um, this last spot was actually pretty good. The, the ledges looked great, but didn't see. I saw the one black, kind of small. was not completely convinced on shooting him, but um, like I said, hopefully learn something. Um, I know a lot of you guys like the commercial breakdowns. Once the charters slow down, which is looking like into September, it looks like October should be pretty slow. I'll be, I'll be getting back to some of the commercial breakdowns for you. But um, other than that, send me some other ideas you guys have. I hope you enjoyed this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and your time. I will see you guys later. See ya.